Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers SN2 competition experiments, testing the effects of substitution and leaving group on rate. This is part two, carrying out the SN2 substitution reactions. For safety, we have to worry about alkyl halides in this experiment. They're volatile, flammable, toxic, and they're irritants. Sodium iodide is an irritant and it's harmful if swallowed. Acetone is a volatile, flammable solvent, irritating to the eyes, skin, and mucous membranes. All of these reagents should be handled with care, wear gloves to avoid chemical exposure on your skin, and work in a well-ventilated space. Set up the apparatus like this with two point bottom test tubes and a beaker. The first reagent that we'll use is a solution of 4 molar 1-chlorobutane in acetone. Here we're using a syringe and needle with a big J-hook. These are useful because it'll allow us to turn the syringe upside down and push out the air bubble that comes in the syringe barrel. We're dispensing here 0.25 milliliters of our 4 molar 1 chlorobutane and acetone solution. Use a separate syringe and needle for each of the different solutions that you add to the reaction mixtures. The next reagent that we'll add is a 4 molar solution of 1 bromobutane in acetone. This will be added to the reaction mixture number 1. We'll be dispensing 0.25 milliliters of this 4 molar 1 bromobutane solution. Now we're going to start dispensing reagents into reaction number 2. First, we'll add 0 0.025 milliliters of 4 molar 1 bromobutane. The next reagent that we'll add is 4 molar 2 bromobutane in acetone. We'll use 0 0.25 milliliters of this solution and add it to reaction number 2. Next, we'll add a 0 0.5 molar solution of the nucleophile sodium iodide in acetone. We're going to add 2 milliliters of this solution to each one of the reactions. Here's a summary of the various reagents that are present in each one of the reaction tubes. Next, we'll heat the reaction with a water bath at 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. As the reaction proceeds, sodium chloride and sodium bromide products are produced. These are insoluble salts in acetone, so we can see the precipitate developing. That's a good sign because it means the reactions are working. Next, we'll use a centrifuge to remove the precipitates from the products. We're going to load the centrifuge evenly so that it's balanced with one tube opposite the other in the centrifuge carousel. This is important, otherwise the centrifuge will violently vibrate. We're going to turn the centrifuge on. We'll run it for a while. About five minutes is good. We'll turn it down. It's important to leave the centrifuge door shut when the rotor is spinning and make sure it's completely stopped before we open it. In the centrifuge, the precipitate gets pushed into the tip of the point bottom test tubes and forms a pellet. Now it's going to be really easy to just pour off the supernatant, which is a clear solution of the products dissolved in acetone.
In the next part of the experiment, we'll be analyzing these reaction solutions by gas chromatography, or GC for short. Reaction solutions are far too concentrated to inject directly into the GC, so we'll need to dilute them with acetone. If we don't, the signals will be off scale and have flat tops in the GC chromatogram, which isn't helpful for figuring out integrations. Add 8 milliliters of acetone to each one of the reaction solutions and swirl. To inject solution into the GC, get a 25 microliter syringe and rinse it with acetone to clean it. Next, we're going to rinse the syringe with a solution of the reaction solution that we're going to analyze. This just fully cleans out the syringe and gets it ready for injection of our material. Next, drop 1 to 2 microliters of the solution that we want to analyze, followed by 10 microliters of air. The air will help us push the solution into the GC's injector port. Here's what it looks like close up. Now we're ready to go on to the last part of the experiment, GC analysis.